Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to check out Warpinator. This is a free utility that makes it very easy to transfer files between two computers on a local area network, regardless of whether they're running Linux or Windows or Android or iOS. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, in this video I'm going to demonstrate Warpinator running on lots of different computers, all running a different operating system. Here on this PC we're running Zorin OS, but I've also got my laptop which is currently running Windows 10 as you can see, and over here I've got a PC which is running Linux Mint. Now, to transfer files between two computers, Warpinator needs to be installed on each system, and the install process depends on the operating system as we're about to see. Warpinator was first created by the Linux Mint team and introduced in Linux Mint 20. So if you're running Linux Mint 20 or Linux Mint 21 as we're running here, Warpinator is pre-installed. We just have to go down to the menu, go to accessories, and then go to the bottom here to find W, and there we are, we've got Warpinator, we can run it up, it'll launch a little icon down on the tray to show you it's working, as you can see, and it will initialize. And then after that, it'll search for other computers on the network running Warpinator, which is currently none. So, how do we get Warpinator on other computers? Well, if you're running a Linux distro but not Linux Mint, you may find Warpinator in its graphical software installer. So for example, over here in Zorin OS, we could go to the software store down there and we could do a search for a warp in Nator, if I can spell it right like that, and there it is. And we can just click on that and we can do an install. There we go. And to be expedient, we'll launch it from here rather than searching the menus. There we are, it'll come up and we'll uh, get rid of the uh, setup window there. It's initializing as previously and hopefully now it'll find another computer on the network. It has, it has found the Linux Mint PC. And if we go back across to Linux Mint, hopefully yes, it has found here Zorin OS. They've decided to become Warpinator friends. And just before we test this out, it's worth noting if Warpinator is not available in your graphical software installer, it is available as what's known as a flat pack, and if we go across to the Flathub website, we can find it here. I will, of course, give you this link in the video description, and we could just click on install. And if flat pack installs aren't enabled on your system, you can set them up by going to the setup guide over here, which takes you through the process. And for example, here, if we scroll down to, for example, Zorin OS, we can see we don't have to do anything to install flat packs in Zorin OS, which is why we had. Warpinator available to us in the software store. Anyway, let's now test this out. Let's send the file across to ourselves on Zorin OS. So I'll click on send files and we'll browse and we'll go to pictures, I think, and we'll go to say London Zoo and send a picture of a giraffe, which is a nice thing to do, isn't it? And that is now being sent, although it's waiting for approval. So if I go back across to Zorin OS, we can see here it's waiting approval. We can click on a little tick like that. And there we are, it's completed. The giraffe has been transferred from one computer to the other. But where has it gone, I hear you ask? Well, if we look up here at the top, we can open up the save folder, which by default is called Warpinator. And there is a giraffe. And uh, yes, we've sent this giraffe across the network. It's very exciting indeed. And if we want to change where files go to, we can go to the preferences here, which are nice and straightforward. We'll look at them all later on. But for now, we'll just look at location for received files, which we can browse to become anything we want on the system. But for now, we'll leave it as Warpinator, and I think we should reciprocate the file exchange. So we will send some files across to Linux Mint. We'll click on Send Files and Browse. And again, we'll go to Pictures. And this time we'll send a whole folder. Let's send a folder called Vegetation. Let's uh, add that. And again, it's waiting for approval. We'll go back across to Linux Mint, where we can now accept the transfer. And it's come in nice and fast. We can see we've now got six files up here. And again, we'll open up the uh, Save folder. And here we've got Vegetation. And wow, we've now got a load of pictures transferred across. Here they are, lots of lovely pictures of a uh, 
well, of vegetation, really. If you're thinking, why is it five files when it said six? It is five files and the folder they were in. Oh, yes, we always forget the folder things are in. But as you can see, Warpinator is working now very well transferring files between two different Linux distros. So let's now move on to add Windows to our Warpinator team. Greetings. Here I am back again, and we're still running Warpinator here in Linux Mint, although I've shut down the PC running Zorin OS because it had a rather loud cooling fan. But do not despair because over here we've still got my laptop running Windows 10, and we're going to go to this website here, which is for Winpinator, which is Warpinator for Windows. And as the site explains, Winpinator is an unofficial Windows port of Warpinator, and as it says at the bottom here, it's made with love in Poland. I do like that. Anyway, let's go to the downloads, where it lets us know this will work in Windows 8, 10 and 11, maybe Windows 7 with the various provisos. And there are two versions available, 64-bit and 32-bit. I'm going to go for the 64-bit version like that and save it like that. Nice small download and we'll uh, run up the setup program like this and Windows will object to it, simply because it's a minority program that Windows isn't sure about. But as far as I can ascertain, there are no malware problems here, so we'll click on More Info, and we'll click on Run Anyway, but of course you do so at your own risk, and we will uh, let Windows set things up like that. There we are, it's uh, going through, shouldn't take a second. Do we want to set things up? We do, and we will agree to the license and the default setup is fine as far as I'm concerned, although I'm going to turn off Explorer integration. I don't like things that interfere with Windows Explorer, but we'll do next after that, and I'll accept the uh, defaults here. And here we go. Very exciting. And there we are. It has completed, which is uh, rather good. And I'm not going to look at the release notes now, but we will run up Warpinator. And as you can see, Windows Defender leaps in. This is perfectly reasonable because Warpinator wants to communicate across the network. And to do that, it's got to be allowed access to the firewall. So we're going to click on Allow Access down there. And we'll also close down our web browser. And yes, we're now running Winpinator Warpinator here in Windows. And it looks like we can see the Linux PC. There we go. Let's go across to Linux. And yes, we can see the Windows PC at the other end. Let's send it a file. Let's browse again to find something exciting. We're back in London Zoo. Let's send it Zebra Light Thing. That looks uh, exciting, doesn't it? And if we just go across back to Windows, there we are. And the good thing here in Windows is we can just click on the file, double click there, and we can see the file. And do any of you know what type of animal this is? It's got zebra-like legs. It lives in London Zoo. What is it? If you know, let us all know down in the comments section. Anyway, I think I'm just going to send something back to be nice, so we'll pick something to send back the other way. What about, I don't know, the thumbnail for my robots video? That'll do, won't it? We'll open that up and send it across. And here in Linux, we can't actually just click on the file to open it up. It doesn't work. We have to open up the save folder. No problems, and there we are, open it up, and yes, we've got the thumbnail to my AI and robots explaining the future video. And even more importantly, we've got an easy way of transferring files across a network from Windows to Linux. Guess what? Here I am back again, and we're still running Warpinator here in Linux Mint 21, and also over in Windows 10, where I've even scaled things to fit better on the screen. But we're now also going to add in this, my Gemini PDA, which runs Android. And over here, I've already run up the Play Store and found Warpinator, as you can see, so we'll click on Install. As you can see, as with the Windows version, it is unofficial, but it does seem to work. And there we are, it's installed, so let's run it up. Very exciting. And what does it say? It wants access to photos, media, and files. Well, of course it does. It's a file sharing application. That's perfectly reasonable. And it wants me to set a downloads directory. That's also pretty reasonable. Let's pick the uh, SanDisk Extreme Pro micro SD card like that. I think that'll be okay. And there we are, it seems to be working. The bottom of the screen, I think, is our Windows PC, and at the top here is Linux Mint. 
Shall we send a file over to Linux Mint? Why not? We click on that. Do we have recent here? Yes, that must be something recently we can send. Let's send that file over like that. And uh, yes, it's awaiting permission. So we'll go across to Linux Mint. And yes, there's a file to accept, so we will. And there we are. And we must click obviously on Android to find it. And yes, it's come across. And let's have a look at it. We'll go into open the save folder. And in theory, it sent across that picture of the Latte Panda Delta. Isn't computing an amazing thing? So what we've seen is we've now got Warpinator available for Linux, for Windows, and for Android. And I just want to make clear that we've also got a version available for iOS. This is still Android, Chris. This is Google Play, it is. And here is the, the GitHub page for the Android version as well. But I'm not quite as mad as you might think because the reason I opened this up is over here, we've got the version for iOS. And I haven't got an iOS device, so I can't test this out for you. But apparently, it's available via the test flight facility on Apple if you want to try out Warpinator on a mobile Apple device. Right, I said we'd look through the preferences and controls, and so we will. And the first thing to note is that next to the Send Files button, there's a little control over here, which will clear history. So if we just click on that, everything gets neat and tidy. In terms of the actual preferences, we go into those over here. You'll see they're quite straightforward. Uh, on the general screen, we can do things like turn off the notification icon down here. We can flick that on and off if we want to, like that. Uh, we can start the program automatically. It's not something I want to do, but if you wish it to run when your computer boots up, you can. You can control when the main window opens as well with that. You can use compression to transfer files if you wish. And as we've already seen, here we can set the location for receive files. For me, the most important control here is beneath that, which is the one for requiring approval before accepting files. I turn that off, which means you don't have to worry with all the accept notifications. I think that's very handy. And again, you can get rid of overwrite notifications and notifications when you actually sent files. Over in the connection tab, as you can see, we have a group code. If you wish, you can set up different groups of computers communicating in isolation in different Warpinator groups. But the default here is Warpinator, as we can see. And do note, if you change this or set other groups up, the group code is case sensitive. Moving down under network, network interface to you should be fine on automatic most of the time. I've tried out Warpinator on lots of different systems and on only one did I have to change this. Here, the only option other than automatic is to set the actual hardware for connection. So clearly it doesn't matter which way you go. But I did find on one machine where I got lots of virtual network adapters installed for various reasons, I did have to move from automatic to the physical adapter to get Warpinator to work. So if you find that Warpinator is not working for you, do look in network and see if you should change the connection away from automatic. Next here, it's possible to view and if necessary, change network port settings as we can see. And indeed on some systems, your firewall may need to be configured to allow communications on the set network ports. This said by accepting installation defaults, I have not had to do any manual configuration. We saw how Windows leapt in to configure the firewall for us. And here in Linux, if things do need configuring, we can just click on update firewall rules. You put in your standard password. I'm not going to do this because things are working here, but you can do that if you've got problems. Finally, note that if you want to run Warpinator on a virtual machine, for example, one set up using VirtualBox, then in its settings, the network adapter must be set to bridged. And this is so the virtual machine will appear as a real machine on the network, so it can be detected by its Warpinator friends. In theory, transferring files between two computers on the same local area network is pretty simple. But in practice, it can get tricky, particularly when different operating systems are involved. And in that context, I hope you might find Warpinator to be useful. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.